Right, this is a short video just giving a sense of what this thing does. My uh, barn door tracker I've been building over the last month or so. Uh, I've got it set up as I would outside. I am waiting for it to get dark. I'm just going to have a clear night tonight. Uh, normally I wouldn't set it up with the weight because it makes it a little bit awkward you know, with all the gear to move it, but yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, so I've got a tripod, just a simple thing. Uh, max weight capacity is six something pounds, uh, 6.6 .6, I think. Uh, I'm hanging a dumbbell, 15 pound dumb dumbbell from it simply to give some more stability to the whole rig. Uh, just some one inch nylon straps and some 3D printed uh, clips uh, works pretty well. Used to have it in a backpack which is really clunky and annoying. Um, on the front here, we've got my intervalometer. So this thing lets me set up the time before a sequence of shots are taken, how long each exposure is, how much delay between each shot, and then how many shots. On this other leg, it, I'm, I'm using just a Velcro tape for all this attachments of stuff to the legs. So the leg is an anchor USB battery, uh, simply here for the power to the Raspberry Pi Pico. And I've got a little switch here so I can turn it on and off. And it's just easier than unplugging it and because I could get it. So we've got the Pico. The wiring's kind of crazy, but um, this guy is a five-way switch. So you can go up, down, left, right, and then click in for center, and I'll explain the controls in a sec. That is attached to a, let's see if I can get this off without making too much of a mess. This is the controller for the stepper motor. Uh, so the Pico controls the controller. The controller then controls the stepper. Um, details of wiring, whatever, on the GitHub website if you're interested. Uh, the tracker itself, 3D printed. Um, I just... Uh, Dated the gears, these yellow ones are printed with a smaller nozzle, um, much better quality. I, I, I tuned my printer years ago for that nozzle, and I've been using a larger one because this is a large print, and it would take forever with a small nozzle. Um, but I didn't switch to the, originally back to the fine nozzle. This is now much finer, so the gear should mesh much better be much smoother operation. I'm, I'm pretty excited about seeing what happens tonight. Um, just have a threaded rod for a camera mount and then of course the camera. The cable for the intervalometer goes in here and this is the 300 millimeter, uh, well 75 300 millimeter lens which I've extended out to 300 uh, millimeter just to show how long it is when I'm taking shots. Um, it can be a pain to set up because, you know, if this thing is pointed way up into the sky, something straight above you, you got to, you know, look through the viewport or the screen. I was trying to set up a laptop to connect to this, but having some USB issues with it, uh, even if USB is not timing out, the camera disconnects periodically. It's just annoying. So I'm, I'm stepping back from that for now. Um... Last bit on the tracker on the side, I've got an, what's called a red dot finder. Uh, you turn it on and it projects, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but inside it just projects a red dot onto a, um, a piece of a clear plastic. And then you align that red dot with Polaris so that you get your polar alignment. So the idea is with polar alignment, you are pointed at roughly, because this is not accurate, roughly celestial north, and then when the stepper turns on, this thing just goes slowly through the night to follow the star. So you see how the camera is rotating? The idea is that that camera would stay pointed at the thing you're taking pictures of. What does this do? Two things. One, it allows for longer shots. There's a rule with cameras, uh, the 500 rule. Um, I can't remember the exact details off the top of my head, but basically with this 300 millimeter lens, stationary, I can take shots less than one second before I start seeing star trails. Like 0.4 seconds, I think. 
Uh, with this tracker, I've gotten up to, you know, five seconds with a little bit of trail if the tracker um, isn't doing exactly what it should be doing. So that's one of the things that I'm hoping to also fix today with the gearing. Uh, so originally, I think until last night, I had the gears mashed up too close. So imperfections, and also these are the older gears, imperfections were causing this stepper to push this, which caused this to wobble more. I would see weird things looking through the viewfinder of the camera that if I'd centered a star and zoomed in, it would like the star would go eh, a little bit up and then a little bit back and then stay there and then come back. So I don't, it was just periodic with the stepper and it's got a bit of a gap now, hoping that'll help solve some of that problem. So, you know, before starting to take shots or even lining up a target, I just come over here, flip that sucker on, and I get power. Um, the stepper, you can see the, the lights flashing, maybe not in the video, but there's four LEDs. They are changing every 4.9 something milliseconds, doing half steps on this little stepper, and the gear is now turning. And very slowly, the gear turning causes this nut on the inside to start walking up this thread and the whole thing opens up. So that's how we get the, to compensate for the rotation of the earth. And it's at side reel speed. Um, been tuning the, you, I've got math for like, given the radius of the tracker from the hinge back here to the rod, um, and side real time, which is slightly less than a 24 hour period, doing the math to figure out how long each step needs to be between um, uh, changing modes for the, uh, uh, on the Pico. Now, just super quick, and it's kind of a longer video than I expected, but super quick. Uh, the, the Pico allows me to control the speed of the tracker now. I've added that in over the last couple of weeks, so it's, I can go up or down, I'm just gonna show real quick. If I go up, I'm gonna go slightly faster, slightly um, longer radius, blinks once to tell me it did something, and then I can hold down to lock it so I can't accidentally change it. And then it also the blinking pattern, which is documented on the GitHub repo, will tell me exactly what happened uh, in case I decided so when it goes off, okay. So it blinked once after a short two second delay, which means I went faster one time. If it blinks, after a 10 second delay means that I told it to slow down and each blink is one iteration, which is all based on the configuration you have for the tracker. So um, that's how I've been trying to dial it in. Tonight I'm also changing the radius uh, by 0.2 millimeters. And I hope that that will get me some better stars along with the better gears with the slight gap. And um, well, the polar alignment I added the uh, the easy finder, the red dot finder, just uh, like two sessions ago last weekend, which has made polar alignment way better. So yeah, that's how it works.